Hey guys, welcome back to Pine Hollow Auto Diagnostics. Today, the Chevy truck is back. 03 Silverado, 1500 HD. Now it's not a drivability complaint this time. It's accessories. More than one. So let's see, uh, the customer gave me a laundry list here. Let's see what's all wrong with this truck. She said, the blower motor was intermittent. The door lock on the front right door does not work, as in, uh, you know, from the key fob or from the door. Front right seat heater, front right dash heat. So I said there's no heat coming out of here. That's weird. And the front right window doesn't work. So, are these all related, or do we have more than one issue? Well, first, let's verify the complaint. So, here's our HVAC system. Turn the fan on. I don't hear anything. There's nothing com coming out of anywhere. Fan does not work. That's confirmed. Door lock on the front right door. So let's try the this switch. That works. That door works. Front right does not. Okay, that's confirmed. There's only a front right door issue there. Front right seat heater. So... That works. Let's come over here. That's dead. The little buttons aren't lighting up. Okay, that's confirmed. The ash heat we won't find out until we look at the blower motor. Front right window. Let's see here. That window works fine. Front right. Nothing there. Nothing there. That one works. This one works. Alright, so all the problems we have confirmed. Now let's look at some body accessory data since uh, in this system it all goes through modules so we might have some trouble codes stored. Let's take a look at that. Alright, we got the auto ID, body control module. Diagnostic trouble codes. Let's see if we got anything in here. Class 2 data link malfunction. Eh, not super helpful. So that's current code. History code. Okay. So, uh,. <clears throat> Let's look at some live data now. Data inputs outputs. Alrighty. Steering wheel. Hmm. Not seeing anything for power windows. Inputs. Brake switch, door unlock switch. Okay, so how about we try the uh, driver's door switch, see if that changes any PIDs. So, look at those. That didn't seem to change. Mm, again, not much help there. Let's see the outputs. Door lock relay, door unlock relay. Okay, so that works. Driver door. Okay, this is rear door, driver door. Left rear, right rear. Hmm, hmm. So let's try the window. 
Yep. Okay. <clears throat> Driver door, rear door. So I'm not seeing here we have left rear, right rear. What about right front? It's not even showing up here. So it looks like that module, the right front door module is offline. We're not even seeing any data from it. Well, let's see what modules we can we can look at. Rear seat, rear seat audio. Okay, here we go. Passenger door module. We can look at that. Diagnostic trouble codes. So we have a no com. Huh. Okay. Passenger door module, we have a no-com. I uh, wonder if there's a rear door module. Driver's seat module. Driver's door module. Let's see if we can talk to the driver's door module here. So we have a class 2 data link malfunction. Okay. Look at the data here. All right, so our driver's door is online. And that's all, huh, I guess it's all the, uh, all the data that we have. Let's try the mirrors. Also, passenger mirror, I can't control, it's interesting. Let's see, vertical position. That changes, that's good. Horizontal position. That's good. All right, so I'm just gathering some some data here. Special functions, output control, mirror heat, passenger window window lockout indicator. Okay, window up down. So I can bi-directionally control the window there. Got the door panel off, unhooked the, uh, the passenger door module here. And first I want to do is check for powers and grounds. So we have the orange wire is the main power and the black is the main ground. Test light to battery positive. See so lights on the ground. Let's check the ground first. And sure enough, we have a good ground. Now let me hook the test light to battery negative. Let's see if we have supply voltage here. We do have supply voltage. Dang, it's not going to be easy then. When I tore apart this passenger door control module, and here the two center pins are power and ground, and the uh, outside pins are for the power window. And I'm just looking for cracked solder joints, you know, some clues. These look fine. Uh, I'm not seeing any any damage here. So next plan of attack is 
to look at our connector pinouts and those are available on all data here so so let's see there's connector one power window battery positive ground power window motor right front up control and then here's connector two a jar switch, passenger door, key switch. And we got connector three. Well, let's see, connector two, 26 pin. And here, here are the other pins here courtesy lamp supply voltage, which also does not work. Door lock actuator, and so on. There's battery positive voltage, we could check that when the module is plugged in see if we have battery positive voltage in that pin basically check some pins before calling this module I mean there's not much more you can do check the communication wires so see this is C3 and C2 there it is PCM class 2 serial data see if we have uh, any signals on that But I'll poke around with the test light, voltmeter, and then we'll go ahead from there. Alright guys, here's where we're at. I plugged the dra er, passenger door module back in. And everything came back to life. The courtesy light. I can control the window. No issues there. You can control it from here lock, unlock. So just messing with it brought it back to life. So the problem is definitely here. Something changed. Maybe uh, you know it's just my luck. If you unplug it, plug it back in, bad connection, comes back to life. You know uh, if you watch my videos you've seen this more than once on GM's. Just poor pin contact I guess. Now let's go back to our scan tool. So under driver's door module, remember before we had in the history codes, or in the current codes, we had this U1000 code, class 2 data link malfunction. Now we have a U1161 after unplugging the uh, passenger module there, loss of PDM serial data. Okay, but currently everything's great. So there's no more current codes. So again, that was our problem, and now everything works. So at this point, I'm just going to reassemble everything, maybe fiddle with the connectors a little bit, see if there's an intermittent, but again you plug it in it'll work for another 10 years it's it's that crazy and it looks like I mean it could have been any one of those 30 wires over there uh, power ground communication wires it's just um, you can't tell you unplug it plug it back in and voila it works so I wish I could give you a more definitive diagnosis there, but it's just at this point it's not worth the time. We didn't see any cracked solder joints. And now uh, everything's back to normal. So, you know, looking at our list, we fixed the issues with the door, but our blower still doesn't work. Now a little while ago it was working, and I could control it, and you know, you could control it. it was blowing out of all the vents so but right now you can start the truck turn it off turn it on no blower so that is a separate issue now let's uh Let's explore that a little further. Let me uh, get this door assembled and 
uh, we'll attack this blower motor problem. Alright, we've got the door assembled and the blower motor is working with everything off. I'm not kidding you guys. This is like a ghost vehicle. So let's start her up. Let's double check that everything works. Here we got windows. We got locks. We got our little courtesy light down there. We got seat heat. So everything with that door works great. Now for the blower. Okay, that time it turned off. You hear that? It kind of kicked on, kicked off. Turn off. The blower does not turn off. When you shut the truck off, the blower stays on. And it's not like a retained power accessory or anything. Open the door. I don't know if this key fob thing maybe needs a new battery. But the blower is staying on right now. That's that's crazy. So I think we have to look at a wiring diagram for that. That's the only code it gives me. Recirc position feedback circuit. So I'm wondering why it doesn't uh, allow me to control the fan bidirectionally here. Like you saw before, special functions output control, we get our uh, or was it input output we get a no com or wrong vehicle selected. So I might try the Varus there. But this is a separate problem. The door accessories are fixed. All right, so we're going after this blower motor. Here's the wiring diagram for this model. So it's not just a simple, you know, four position switch and a resistor. This thing actually has a blower motor control processor. <laughs> Oh man, this week is all about modules, isn't it? And an HVAC control module. So there's just one wire from the module going to this processor. The processor has a power and a ground and a direct, you know, two wires going to the blower motor. So let's find this guy and uh, do some checks at these wires. Power, ground, and, uh, and we'll see what we have on the control wire. I don't know if it's a duty cycle control. We can maybe hook up our scope and see if the module is controlling this fan. And then if that signal is fine, you know, if the duty cycle varies or whatnot, then, uh, well, I mean, we can check the motor itself. We can give it a power and a ground. But otherwise, it's going to be down to this blower motor control processor. All right. Got our scope hooked up, voltage scale. So we have 13.8 on the power feed, right there. Sorry about the glare. And going to ground, 0 0.08, nothing wrong with that. We can confirm with a test light. But I'm interested in the control signal from the module here. this up. 5.9 volts. Okay. So let's turn the key on. See what happens. Sweet. Key on. 
check that out. I was right. It is a duty cycle control. So let's lower the fan speed. That's as low as she goes. And to uh, to make this more visibly appealing, we can even graph the duty cycle. So instead of uh, doing, so right now you can see the on time, the low speed. Uh, let's see here. So you don't know, you, maybe it's 10%, but we can go back to our graphing multimeter and let's do duty cycle. That glare's pretty terrible. 6.4% live. I'm going to turn the fan speed up here. So maximum is 78% duty cycle. So one click down is 58, 43, 32, 25, 19, 12, 6. And that's it. If we turn it off, no more duty cycle. Let's see what the actual voltage is when we turn it off about six volts okay that makes sense so as we're turning the fan on higher and higher you see the the low portion gets bigger when we turn the system off push the, uh, the zero button there Let's see, zero. Yep, there you go. So you get constant, whatever, six volts signal. So there's nothing wrong with our control module here, right? So if you're a parts changer, you might have replaced that, but that would have been more expensive. But our blower motor's still running. So uh, I guess we're done. This guy is toast, that processor. That's all there is to it. I'm gonna open her up just to see if uh, something's wrong in there, but that, the logic in there is toast because it's not varying the speed of the fan. Just for kicks, I got this, what was it called again? The blower motor processor. Pop the cover off and there's a big ass heat sink here and it's kind of whatever. Doesn't smell too bad, but it's non-serviceable. I don't see any cracked solder joints. Gonna get a new one. Uh, I'll ask the dealer how much it's worth, but at least a hundred bucks for this little guy. <laughs> so that's that. Chevy truck diagnosed, fixed. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. Appreciate it. Um, I'll see you next time. All right, guys. Final shot of the blower motor processor repair here. Here's a new unit right here from AC Delco. Now the brand, I don't know, made in Korea. I don't know where they got it, but they had AC Delco on the box, so that's what we're gonna use. Bolted right in, no need to cut anything. Uh, not quite plug and play. The uh, two wires going to the blower motor uh, fit just fine, those plugged in. But these three wires, uh, remember the old processor had two separate plugs, you know, a three wire and a two wire. This is all in one plug, so these three wires you do have to cut off the old connector, splice them in, solder, uh, shrink wrap, the whole bit. But uh, now that's in, and uh, it's always a good idea to check the amperage draw of the blower motor itself. Um, whenever you're replacing a resistor pack or one of these control modules because um, <clears throat> you know, over amperage will kill these things prematurely. 
So we have our ammeter hooked around, doesn't matter which wire, just pick one. Go into the blower motor. And you know we re-zeroed it. So let's turn the key on and uh, check the operation here. I'm just gonna turn the key on, I'm not gonna start the truck. So with the system off, we have zero amps. I'm gonna turn the fan on here. Let's turn it on full blast. See our controls work, everything's good. We have about 13, 13 and a half amps on the blower motor. And if we turn it down, you'll see that amperage decrease, obviously. So 13 and a half amps, nothing wrong with that. That is a good number. Just for kicks, I compared it to uh, the MPV here. That was drawing, I don't know, about 11 amps with the original blower motor and the resistor pack. So <laughs> um, I would say if you're over 15 or 20 amps, then you should probably invest in a new blower motor to prevent buying another one of these control modules. But um, yeah, looks like we're done here. So now they'll have heat for the winter. Everyone's happy. Alright guys, thanks a lot for watching. Stay tuned for more. See you next time. Bye-bye.